Good morning, guys. It is a little after 7, so it'll be up pretty soon. I crashed hard last night, man. I fell asleep just after midnight in bed, was watching a little bit of poker, and caught myself, like, dozing off. I'm like, okay. Dog woke me up at 4, had to go out, and I've been up ever since. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be doing a lot of electrical work. Gonna just start getting stuff out of the way. There's, um, there's nothing really left that I have to do in sequence, so I'm just picking a project. Got garbage, uh, let's see, another day tomorrow night. Yeah, so it'll be picked up Monday, so I don't necessarily have to assemble stuff today. So I'm just gonna get through some stuff. I wanna do all the switches and outlets in the kitchen and the laundry room, and then just move on from there. I'm gonna start replacing all the covers and outlets to black that we wanna switch from the white and start putting in the Caseta smart switches and just see where we go. I also want to do some of the light fixtures, if not all of them. And I decided to take back the ceiling fan that we were gonna put in the master bedroom since we just don't need it. I think it was just a matter of getting used to not having that little bit of airflow. We needed it in the old place, but it's perfectly comfortable in there with the two AC vents, we set it to 71 at night with the Nest, and there's no problem. So rather than going through the really huge hassle of installing it, especially since it's 12 feet up over the bed, I have to take the bed out, put in a box uh, that supports a fan, brace the studs, wire it to you know some circuit for something we don't actually need. So just taking that back. And I want to do the living room fixture, the dining room fixture, the master bathroom replacement light, and the laundry room replacement light. So we'll make a hole with some boxes there too. Starting to lay everything out here and I can't find all the new black trim plates. I know we bought them because I remember buying a black blank plate, which was kind of hard to find for that telecom port that's being replaced. I know I bought them. There aren't that many spots left to hide. Found all the switches, found all the outlets, found the GFIs, found the remotes. Where the hell are those plates? Aha! Found the missing bag. It was in the garage. Darn it. One goof. This one is brown. It was mixed in with the blacks. So when I pulled them all off the shelf, I got one of those. It was close, <laughs> but no cigar. Well, nothing too exciting to show. Just working my way around, rewiring. It's kind of awkward getting under the counters here. Oop, just notice that's a little, a little crooked. I have to fix that. Some of these actual wall, cut, wall cutouts are not straight. As you can see, these two are uneven. Nothing I can do about that, it's just the way it is. And uh, these new black units, I'm not liking part of them as good as the older style originals. I do like that the new ones have uh, double push connections. The original construction here has it all looped around instead of pushed in. Uh, that's definitely not the way I like to do it. So I'm using the push-in connectors on the new ones, which is fine, but they aren't quite as deep, so I'm having to screw them in just a little bit further and I'm barely making contact on the, th on the screw threads. It's just, if you go any bit more, it starts to bevel in. And the other thing is, the actual slots aren't quite as big. They seem a little undersized according to standard. These are totally normal, stuff plugs in fine, but this catches. I thought there was something wrong because it just wouldn't go in. You gotta kind of wiggle it in. So, not the best quality, but looks a lot better. And you know what? With the stuff plugged in, I'm never gonna touch again. So, I got this one left over here, the last GFI, just an extra connection or two. And uh, the two here, I'm gonna have to go back to Lowe's, swap out the brown for the black because I don't have this last one. Then I'm going to do three switches. Actually, I'll do four. I can do the kitchen too. Um, let's see, two of them are gonna be regular and then one of them is going to be part of a three-way. 
And then you, what you do with these is, instead of wiring a full switch to any additionals, three or four way, you just add in these remotes that look very similar with the trim plate option here, it mounts to the wall. This is an actual little remote that you can pick up, kind of like the Apple TV remote size, but it's got the wall mount option. So it becomes another switch, but here's the thing. This isn't wired into the wall at all. The wires are just capped behind there. This talks to whatever switch you pair it with. So if you want to add another switch to control the same outlet, you just add another remote and both of those talk to the switch. When I add another one, maybe you want four rooms to control your outside lights. You just add another one, etc., etc. There's no limit. Now the cool thing about these is they're not just switches. They're not just dimmers. They're programmable. They can do all kinds of different functions and macros. That's why I like these better than some of the cheaper generic switches out there, which are significantly cheaper. These are like 40 to 50 bucks per, but they do more and man, they look good. They are just sleek and clean and modern. You've got your on off, your, your dimmer levels that light up. It's just nice. So we'll get these wired in pretty easy. Oh man, I don't know if I have any caps. I bought, bought one bag, but these were for the lighting. I need some caps to actually cap off. I guess I could just tape. Yeah, I'll just use tape. I'll cut and tape. That'll work. Back to work. So inside each switch container, you've got some screws and some caps and some fairly comprehensive instructions. Top half is installing. Pretty easy. Kill the circuit breaker, take your switch out, put the new switch in, put your wall plate on. And then they give you instructions on how to connect it to your smart home or just your smartphone. You don't actually need a smart home to use these. You can use the app through your phone if you want to, or however you're going to do it with any kind of bridge, which I do have, and that'll make it universal to connect to the rest of my system later on. Let's go ahead and get this installed. This is a normal single light controlled switch. So we've just got three wires and then we'll go ahead and get the new fixture in too. There we go, first switch in. Just noticed I've got a little light spot on the paint there. Luckily I've got plenty left. <laughs> oh, there too. It's the first time I've had this window open so it's shining the side light. Can't tell without the window open, but I'll fix that. Anyway, in place, feels good. This is another cool feature of these switches. If you need to kill power to the outlet temporarily, you don't want to take it all apart, you just pop that out. It's like a little SIM tray and it breaks contact inside so you can work on your light or whatever without taking the light apart. Just put it back in and we're back in business. There's a new kitchen table pendant going in. So I'm betting I can reuse that mount up there. It's probably, if not a standard size, an adjustable. I'll have to take it out and check. But uh, the first thing I need to do is set my length of the pendants. There's just a set screw and you can set the height. Probably want them about head level while I'm standing. And that'll put them, oh, a good, three feet above the table. That'll be like the shortest one. I'll have to check it out and see how it looks. So I sat down at the table, held the light in front of me. I don't want the light in your face. So I want it above so you can see everybody across the table. Measure it out to three feet above the table. We're at 10 feet to the ceiling to the floor. It was uh, seven foot four inches from the top of the table. So I just measured four foot four from the base of the bulb to the adapter there. And that's where I'll set the longest one. And then the two I'll alternate a little shorter. And we're in. All right, that's looking pretty good. Of course, the sconces aren't on yet. We're doing a quick function check, both of the new switch and the new lights. So let's hit the switch. I'm just gonna hit it on, and there we go. All right, now I've got uh, 
daylight bulbs in here right now. I don't have enough soft white. I'll pick some more up at Lowe's. I'm not using the daylight in here. I want them to match the nice, more warm color tone. Now, alternatively, if you want to go even crazier, and yes, I do have those slightly uneven depending on where you look at it, but to the eye here, they're normal, but they're, uh, they're staggered around in a triangle, so it depends on the angle you look at. They look kind of weird. Anyway, if you want to go even crazier, you can put smart bulbs in the sockets here and then change the color temperature via the smart home anytime you want to. But I don't want to do that. I just like the one particular color temperature and that's all I'm ever going to set it to. They also have, uh, by the way, two different types of smart bulbs now. They have the full RGB. So if you want to do any color, any dimness, you know, anything you want, or for much cheaper, usually about half the cost, just white bulbs, but you can still change the color temperature of white. So you don't get other colors, red, green, blue, and such. It's only white, but you can change it from a cool to a warm white. So if that's all you're interested in, you can do that. Me, I'm cool with just a smart switch and putting in just nice soft white bulbs everywhere that we're actually using the house. Daylight is great for uh, workspaces like the garage or out back where I'm doing filming, things like that where color temperature is important, but it's a little harsh on the eyes for just a general homey feel. It's a little too cool. So cool thing about this switch is uh, you've got the dimmer light here that shows you what level you're at but it's not hard level some switches you know you, you go up and down and you've got maybe six or seven different settings and that's it this is infinite this is just like a general guideline of where it is but it's a smooth scroll oh the phone's not gonna pick it up it's gonna auto adjust but you can just keep clicking or hold it down, and it's just an infinite variation all the way down. That's the dimmest setting. Now, when you turn it on, it comes up very quickly. When you turn it off, I'm just going to hit the off button. It slowly dims to a nice gentle off. That wasn't me waiting. That was like a, a two or three second kind of warm down and you can change that. So this is the default behavior. Are a little more assembled. I'm gonna go to Lowe's in a bit and get the right bulbs for it. And we'll get the table underneath and see what it really looks like. Much better than having the light way up there at the table or at the ceiling. Much more natural. So this is the Lutron Bridge. This basically talks to every Lutron device in the house, so all the switches that I'll be installing, and it goes out to the internet, and that connects to your Lutron account. And that connects back to your smartphone or the rest of your smart home stuff. In my case, it'll connect to my smart things account, which is my whole house system. So this just sits anywhere on your network that has internet access. So I'm gonna plug it into one of the available ports in my uh, original Fios modem. I'm gonna use that just for all my bridges, since they require a wired connection. That way I don't have to use all the Google Wi-Fi hotspots to plug things into. Well, change of plans there. Unlike some other bridges, this one actually requires to be on the home network for setup of devices. So that means I have to plug into the Google Wi-Fi because that's the network everything is on. Problem is my PC is already plugged into the one port. So I'm gonna go pick up a cheap little four or five port switch, plug that into the Google Wi-Fi, and that'll give me access ports on the same network. So I'll still have, uh, for example, the Arlo is plugged directly into the modem. It doesn't have to be on the home Wi-Fi. It just has to have focus camera. It just has to have internet access. And that's the way most hubs and bridges are. But the uh, Lutron wants to be on the actual network, so we'll have to go make it happy. Okay, off to Lowe's and Walmart. That figures. I got the outlet to return at Lowe's, and I got the ceiling fan at Home Depot. Got to go all the way to Tampa to return that. But it was 220 bucks, so it's worth the drive. <laughs> Finally back home. That was a trip.
Got all the light bulbs and the light bulbs for the dining room fixture, which I also forgot to get. And got the switch, got the fan returned, and exchanged my outlet. There we go. Beautiful. Much better. Yep, that works. Okay, the new switch is on the network. That gave me four more wired ports on the network. So our Caseta bridge should be now talking. That leaves me room for the IKEA bridge and the Samsung SmartThings hub. Should be all I need. Okay, that worked. I had to unplug and plug back in the bridge. It wouldn't connect, just kind of a fluke thing. And then I just had to tap the button on the back of that to pair it to the app. And then what you do is when you want to add anything to your system, like a switch or an outlet or blind control or whatever, anything in the ecosystem, you just have to pair it basically like a Bluetooth speaker. On these switches, you just hold down the bottom button for 10 seconds and these will start to blink flash. And it's all through the app, it's really easy. The app itself has a bunch of scheduling. It works with Siri and HomeKit natively. And if you want it with uh, you know who, or Google, you just go through Hub, like I'm doing. Okay, on to the next one. Got the laundry room main switch plugged in. This is the normal dimmer. Hmm. I thought that was chipped, it's just a shadow. Anyway, when you have a three-way, which this is, there's one here and one over there. Normally, they're just paddle switches and they control the main light up there. So. The way these work is one light controls everything. And if you want it to be additional, you install a remote with a wall plate, which is right here. So the remote is this little guy here and it actually pops out if you want to hold it as a remote. You can just buy these separately or you can buy it in the kit with the wall plate. So there is a battery in here, lasts you know, a long time, but it's just a little watch cell just pops out, not a big deal. And they do give you this nice two-piece wall plate. So this is just a dummy. Basically, this is a cover plate at this point. Any additional switches in the previous three, four, or whatever way, just get capped off. I'm gonna shove that back in, and this just becomes you know, a, a remote blank plate, and that's it. This pairs the same way as the switch does to the hub, you just hold down off, hold down off, they pair together. So you can pair as many remotes to a switch as you want to, but only one remote, uh, one switch per remote. You can't have this control multiple switches. You can have multiple remotes to a switch, but not multiple switches to a remote. So now I'm gonna replace this light up here, and you know, I'm wondering, since I'm putting in an LED in it, if it will be dimmable. I'll have to look on the box and see if it is. Not a big deal if it's not. I never planned on using it as a dimmable unit, but we'll see. Hey, look at that. It is. Pretty cool. So I just got a couple of these in, and these should convert our new bedroom lamps into touch lamps. Supposedly they work with any kind of metal base lamp, and uh, that should be really cool because turning that little jobby do kind of sucks. And because they're LED, they are dimmable, and this gives you three different dim settings just by touching it. And I think they're like six bucks each. I'll add them to the store down below if they work. Let's see. So it goes in between the bulb and the existing socket, and you may need to buy a new hoop. This is barely, barely big enough. It's not even fully in there. I'll pick one up next time I go to uh, a store that carries something like that. Just needs an extra couple inches. So, does it work? Sure does. Pretty cool. Highly recommended. So I just switched sides because I turned everything on. Light works great, by the way. It's super bright. Show it to you in a second. But it's stuck on. So I thought, okay, well, uh, you know, maybe the position one has to be on one side or the other just from the way the wires running up to the light and through I don't know so I swapped them same thing obviously they're not using standard color coding the red one is supposed to be on its own side but <laughs> these two 
black here are uh, definitely the ones that need to be separated. I believe looking at the loom, it's going to be that bottom black, so that's what I'm going to try first. That did it. This thing is at least twice as bright as the old fluorescent bank. And now, I have full dimming control. Very nice. All right, now to button this back up and we'll connect this one to the network. Oh, and gotta put that remote in and then pair it to the switch. Let's put the switch into pairing mode. Just hold this for about 10 seconds. We're looking for those left LEDs to start blinking fast. There they go. Same thing with the remote. A little tiny LED in the upper left-hand corner there. Doing its thing, cycling through. Okay. So now the switch works. Dimming down and off. Let's see if the remote works. Dimming down and off. Sweet. All right. Now I can add this switch to the network. We don't have to add the remote to the network because it's just connected to that. One thing I'm noticing is that after you pair the switch, the light doesn't go full brightness and the pendants there in the kitchen flashed a little bit when you tried to use it. So I find that just pulling out the reset switch, eh, no fingernails, <laughs> pulling out the reset switch for a second and then just letting it trip again. fixes it. So now we're back to full brightness. I'll do this bank next. This one is for the kitchen can lights. And then this is part of a three-way. The other one down at the end of the hall for, let's see, this one and this one, just these two hallway can lights. So we'll have a straight swap and a two-part. And probably put the remote down at that end, that's the one we use the least. Uh, actually, I don't know if I can do that because this one is in a triple bank. Um, no, that'll work fine. I just don't have to use, oh crap. Can I use that remote in a multi-bank? Because it's got that special socket it sits in and that's part of, that's got to come off. Let's take a look at one. Okay, so the trim plate just snaps off. We've got the remote in here, and it's a two-piece. Got two screws, and this clear piece is what the remote is actually sitting in. So this probably comes off. We won't use this part, and that should work. I'll have to check it when I get it off. And by the way, I'm not saying put the remote in the least used location because of any functional difference, but my theory is the battery will last longer if you're using the regular switch more than the battery powered remote. Got the kitchen and hallway wired and confirmed good. Not powered up quite yet. And just to confirm, yes, that little piece does come out and you get pretty much a plastic standard mounting for the remote. So you can put it in multi-gang boxes. Well, that was the most fun circuit yet. Got the kitchen done, got the hallway done, got the entry foyer done. Went to do the outside. And what I thought was just a straight single switch. Just controls the uh, two porch lights, two, three, I don't know how many are, and the garage lights. Oh no, see this was part of the old automatic light system which I thought was just a fancy single switch. This thing had wires going into multiple circuits, wires that were dead-ended off. Uh, yeah, not a clue exactly how this thing was working, but it's wired as a single switch now and everything works. <laughs> We've got our inside right in front of the door and a remote paired to the two down the hallway. Good to go.
So that takes care of about a third of the house. I got the laundry room done, change out that light, kitchen table circuit, change it out its light, main kitchen lights, hallway, entry, outside lights, program them to come on and off automatically at sunrise and sunset. Another benefit of the uh, Caseta app, lots of things you can do directly in there without any other equipment, just the free app. Check that out if you are looking at you know, doing your smart home stuff, you can start small. You don't need to go big. You don't need to get everything under the sun like I'm doing. You can do piecemeal, and there are a lot of built-in functions right off the bat. The Caseta stuff works natively with Apple Home and Siri. So it doesn't work natively with Alexa. You have to get the bridge and go through a hub if you want to use it with Alexa. But, you know, if, you just, if you're in the iPhone or uh, iPad, ecosystem you've already got it so it's built right in anyway that's it for tonight sun's going down i'm running out of daylight to do any more electrical work see you tomorrow